Have you ever wondered how phase shift oscillators actually work? And how to calculate the various values for the frequency you want? There's a few videos on uh, YouTube about that, but I found them very confusing. <laughs> so I decided to, to make my own. Okay, so the idea is, the transistor has a 180 degree phase shift, right? And each one of these circuits gives you a 60 degree for a total 360, which is positive feedback. But why 60 degrees? Well, actually, if you have a circuit like this, you have any phase shift you want because it depends on the frequency. Now if that was say 5k ohms and this had an XC of 5k we know that it would be a 45 degree phase shift in total. As a vector analysis would give you at zero degrees, we have 5k coming out this way. Minus 90 degrees for the capacitor, we have 5k down. That's 90 degrees. So the resultant is, of course, here. That's 45 degrees. Now, if you change that to having four of these okay you would satisfy this because 45 times 4 is 180 right and that gives you your total 360 the only difference between 3 and 4 is going to be the actual frequency because it's the frequency that determines the reactance. So, normally people want three, they don't want four, you just save a capacitor and a resistor. So what you want really, instead of 45, is you want 60 degrees, right? So you want a capacitor that has a reactance down here. Well, how do you figure that out? Well, it's not too hard. As far as I know, the, the, the formula is uh, arctan xc over r to give you your phase angle. I don't know how you draw a phase angle thingy. I forgot how you make that phase angle thing anyway. If we have arctan XC over R to give us our angle, and we want 60 degrees, right? So we're going to have arctan XC over R equal to 60. Could do the 45 if you wanted more parts. <laughs> So that's 60. So using some uh, simple algebra. Algebraic manipulation. We can get rid of that R. Look. Put it up here, right? 60R. Arctan XC equals 60R. I want to get rid of the arctan, so we just tan it. If you tan it, you're going to get XC. Tan the arc tan, you lose the tan. What? Okay, so it's tan. 60 times R. Do, 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 do. Yuck. Edit this out. Okay. So, XC, what is XC? XC <laughs> equals 1 over 2 pi FC. So, if XC equals 1 over 2 pi FC, 
And we know XC is 1060 times R. That means 1060 times R equals 1 over 2 pi F C. Right? Again, with the manipulation, we could say R equals 1 over 2 pi F C tan 60. Well, we can calculate tan 60, which I've already done. Tan 60 is 1.732 1 1.732 for tan 60 so r equals 2 pi fc times 1.732 can I get in here? So if you know your frequency you know your capacitor you can find your resistor value or if you want to find your capacitor value, all right, C equals 1 over 2 pi F R 1.732. And of course, frequency equals 1 over 2 pi C R 1.732. So you can calculate all the values. Now there's a little problem. It's not going to be accurate because these parts are going to interfere with your phase shifting because they're introducing their own uh, impedances, messing things up. Let me get rid of this last one because I'm not using it. <laughs> but you'll be close if you did calculations for uh, say a thousand hertz, you might get uh, between 500 and 2000. Could be out, could be out by two. That gets you in the ballpark. Why don't we take a look at the circuit on the scope and see what it's doing? Hey, this is the oscillator running with four filters, each one uh, giving 45 degrees phase shift. Put a pod in here for biasing so I can get the thing to work properly. So that's four. Let's try three sixty degrees. I just have to move that resistor and move this one here. That's three filters. The frequency has changed, but it's still oscillating. I'd have to adjust my bias a bit, but you see the frequency doesn't change. It's Okay, so that's how it works. Nice sine waves. 